Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Arpit Shah and today I'm going to talk about mutable and immutable classes in Java. Let's first understand word mutable and immutable. Mutable is something that you can change. Immutable is something once constructed it cannot be changed. So how does it relate to Java? So before we understand mutable or immutable classes, Let's first understand mutable and immutable variable. So let me show you with an example. As you can see on the screen, I have created two mutable type variables. Now how do we know they are of type mutable? So as per definition, mutable type variables can be reassigned value after the initialization is completed. So the line seven and eight where those variables are initialized and at that point I have assigned value 10. Now if we can change value of x and y after initialization point then we can confirm that they are of type mutable. So let me reassign value to x to be 20 and y to be 20 as well. I'm going to print xy after initialization and again after reassigning the value. So we can see that their values actually changed. So as expected they both were 10 before and then changed to 20. So this confirms that both of the variables are of type mutable. Now what makes them immutable? So keyword final which can make variable immutable. Now as you noticed, as soon as we assign final keyword to variable y, the compiler would not let us reassign any new value after initialization. So we must delete this line before we can execute the code. And if I run the program now, you would notice that y value will remain 10. So word final makes variable immutable. To understand mutable and immutable classes, I would have to take you through real life example and then I will show you what kind of uh, trouble you can get into and then how immutable class can protect you from that. So let's create first two empty class, one called mutable and one called immutable. Let's assume real life scenario. So let's say if your boss has asked you to write a code which is of some game and the requirement is that user should be able to pass the initial value of some cartoon character and then when user moves that cartoon from position A to position B we should be able to calculate how much distance that cartoon has traveled uh, by working out their initial value and their final position and then should be able to display on the screen. So if you were if you were to write that code using mutable class, let's see how the code will look like. So first I'm going to create two mutable objects which take some initial value of the cartoon's position. Now we have two mutable objects which has initial value of 10 and 100. We would also allow user to then move cartoon character which is basically passing the final position of the cartoon. So we will say cartoon1 dot set final position and then we will pass whatever the final position is. So in our case, let's call it um, 20. And for cartoon 2, it will be the same. So let's say that's 200. And uh, once we know initial position and once we know final position, then we should be able to ask 
the class that give me the distance travel. So we can say let's call it a get distance travel. And then we should be able to print them out. And we can do that for cartoon 2 as well. Let me fix a minor error here. Uh, let's make it two here. There you go. So now, uh, as you can see on the screen, they all are showing error because we haven't written any code for mutable class to handle any of these. So let's now write uh, code in the mutable class. So as we know, we have requirement of two mutable variables. So let's call one to be uh, initial value and let's call the other one to be final value and we would need a constructor which allows us to set the initial value during the construction itself so let's create constructor and pass the initial value Now we will need two methods, um, one to set the final value and one to calculate the distance. Now we can just implement setters and get getters. So user can anytime get the initial or final value or they can set new value to any of those variables. We now also have to implement a method called get distance traveled. So let's implement that method. So that method will be public and it will return some sort of string. So the way it will work is it will return a string of the value which will be the get final value minus get initial value so it will so when we say distance travel is basically your final value and then subtract your initial value from that now let's execute the core to see if uh, it's working as expected Let's confirm the our method names are same. So final value. Yeah, so now the method names are same. So everything is looking fine. So let's execute the code. So as expected, when we execute this code, the distance traveled by cartoon one is final value minus initial value which is 20 minus 10 which is 10 and cartoon 2 will be 200 minus 100 which is 100 so our code is working as expected so the question you may have that mutable class seem to be working as expected then what is the problem to understand the problem here let me reiterate the original requirement so the original requirement was that user should be allowed to create a two cartoon objects with their initial value or position. In our case, it is 10 and 100. Now, other requirement was that we should be able to calculate the distance traveled by that cartoon by subtracting the final value from its initial position. So it is very important that we do not lose track of the initial position. So then when we subtract from final position, we get the accurate distance traveled. Now, because we have allowed both variables in the class to be mutable, 
the initial value can also be changed by user by mistake. Let me show you how. So cartoon one allows set initial value method, which then lets you overwrite the initial value object. And you can do the same with cartoon two. So after doing such a mistake, if I print out the distance travel and I haven't touched the final value yet. So original expectation was that we should be saying travel was 10 and 100 because that's how much we travel. But because now user has overwritten with some other values, now travel calculation will be completely wrong. And as you can see, the new travel calculation is 5 and 185. So these these happen purely because we allowed the initial value variable to be mutable. If we would have made it immutable, then user can only pass the initial value during the construction and then no one can change those values. So let me show you how that is done. So let's first copy the mutable class code to immutable class and then change the class name to immutable. So Compiler does not complain, and that means we need to change the constructor name to immutable as well. Now, as per our requirement, we do not want user to by mistake change the initial value. So we will make sure that initial value variable is immutable. We can do that by just adding final keyword at the front. Now, as soon as we add final keyword, you can notice that the compiler would not allow us to exercise set method. So we must delete the set method before we can execute the code. Now let's change our main class to rather use immutable class objects. And as soon as we switch to immutable class objects, you will notice that the set method is not available. So user cannot do the mistake that they done with mutable class. So let's delete those methods as well. And now you can understand that our initial value variable is naturally protected because we are using immutable variable type. Now, you must have noticed that I haven't made both variable in the class immutable, which means this class is not actually immutable class because for any class to be completely immutable, all the variables in the class has to be immutable as well. So to make this class truly immutable, you need to make both variable final but our gaming requirement was to not allow user to change initial value after initialization but allow them to change final value if cartoon moves to different location so just to preserve that requirement i have allowed one variable to be mutable um, but by this example you must have got the concept of mutable class and immutable class and how you can use them to protect against users mistakes uh, thank you guys for watching. If you would like to be up to date with my next tutorials, please don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.